Welcome to Creekside Online. Our mission is to reach the world with Jesus one person at a time with Christ, community, and compassion. We are so glad that you're joining us today. If it was your very first time, please take a moment to click the link below and fill out the online connect card. We would love for you to stay connected throughout the week and everywhere you go. And the best way to do that is through our church app. There you can watch additional messages and find resources to help you grow in our relationship with Jesus Christ. It's free and you can download it wherever you download your apps. For us, church is much more than just a weekend experience. And we want you to know that there's a place perfect for you at Creekside. No matter where you're watching today, let's get ready for what God has in store for us. Hey church, will you pray with me? Let's pray, let's pray that prayer of Psalm 81. Father, you said if we'll just listen, if we will just listen to you and do what you said, that there would be this life of overflow, that no matter what happens in our life, when we feel like we've hit a rock, that, that you can produce honey even out of that. And so, Father, I pray today that you would speak to us, speak to our hearts. Father, I pray that you'd use the Scripture to really just whisper in our ears, but then may that whisper be so loud that we obey. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, that, that psalm is so rich, and it's Deuteronomy 32. It's an echo of that. Psalm 81 at the end, talk, God just says he's pleading with Israel. Oh, you Israel, if you'll just listen. If you just listen to me, if you just obey, I don't care what's happened to your life. Look, I will pour out wheat. And, and as if God thinks, oh, they're going to think that, he, that they can provide for themselves the best wheat. He said, I'll give you the best wheat. And, and I'll even go beyond that in case you think you can provide the wheat. Look, if you trust me, if you just listen and obey, I can even produce honey from a rock. Do you believe that? This is what we've been talking about in the life of overflow. We've been talking about when you pour it all out for God. He's ready to pour it back into you so you can pour it back out to others. And no matter what, even if you get exhausted, God's like, this is a good exhaustion. I'll tell you, you talk to any of these ministers here. There's, there's times where we're just so exhausted. But then you just are like, wow, God just filled me right back up. That's the life of abundance. That's the life of overflow that we've been sharing with you today. We've been talking about Christ, community, and compassion. And those are the three things. If you pour your life into those things, the community, the small groups, if you pour yourself into compassion, this word compassion, constantly associated with Jesus. He had so much compassion for others. And his father gave him all the strength and all this power. To share this grace, this favor that he intended for mankind. And we have all that we need in Jesus Christ. Do you know that? No matter what kind of problems, no matter what kind of suffering you're going through, we have everything that we need in Jesus Christ. He did nothing more, friends. What is a billion trillion years with him in glory? All because of the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, that was poured out for us. And all he asks for us to do is to keep that flow, that river of his grace and favor, keep it pouring through our lives to use the Holy Spirit, to use the Holy Spirit's gifts that he gave to us. Jesus said in John 7, if you'll believe in me, springs of living water will well within you, flood within you into others' lives. Last week we talked generosity, and we talked about this whole challenge that I gave you between you and God. You take this challenge, you read down through here, pray to God, God, what do you want me to do? We talked about how God even dared us. He said, test me in this. Bring the whole tithe, the tithe means a tenth. Bring that in and see if I don't flow open, throw open the floodgates of heaven. We gave you a 90-day challenge saying this is money-back guarantee. <laughs> And, and understand the blessing, what a blessing. See if a blessing doesn't come in your life. And we're speaking out of experience that this is what God does when you go all in. But here's the problem. So many people just tiptoe in just a little bit instead of going all in with God. And that's really what our challenge is for you to have overflow. You've got to go all in. I was a little nervous last week. I admit it when Alan 
did his whole giving thing. Hey, you got money. You know, ask somebody, hey, I got money, and then bring it up here. They're not going to get it back, that kind of thing. I also was like, man, we got to have more cash offerings on Sunday morning. It was, it was like more than $2,000 came in, but people was like, oh, I don't need this cash. I'll just, you know, that was awesome how generous you were. But there were some pretty incredible things that happened out of that. And one lady, Michelle, talks about Sherry. A Sherry, a good friend of her, collapsed in the driveway, had an aneurysm. Uh, a month ago, she gave her organs, uh, donated her organs. Unfortunately, she didn't make it. But then she talks about her sister. Her sister, Sharon, her twin sister, was by her side that whole week that, that she was uh, there uh, suffering in ICU. And uh, Sharon is now, of course, without her sister a couple weeks. And Sharon's a single mom of two girls. Her oldest, Tabby, was adopted and was born with fetal alcohol syndrome. Her youngest, Anna, helps Sharon as much with Tabby as she can, but she herself is only in high school. And during that week, Sharon would leave the hospital only to go home to feed her own two kids dinner, shower, and sleep. She missed an entire week of work and then some to be by Sherry's side. And since then, she has missed even more work the uh, last couple of weeks because of illness plaguing her and the girls. And on top of that, she has a broken foot and is needing surgery next month to fix it. And she said Sharon works two jobs. She's a preschool teacher, aide at her church at Southside. And also she spends her weekends on a broken foot cleaning the church to prepare it for Sunday. And I know uh, missing so much work has put a strain on her household budget. So, uh, so she's given her that money. So there you go. That's what happens, friends, when the church gets generous. I mean, needs are met. The glory of God is given to other people who most need it at times. So we, we want to continue in this idea of being a generous church and on giving it. We believe it so much, man. We know that our kids need to have it too. So our student ministry, they're working these same things that we have here. They have reminders. They're going all in on their commitments, tucking it away in their Bibles too. Our kids are doing it. Man, we as a church are going to see this place thrive and get even more joy than it already has as we get more faithful in this idea of overflow and compassion. And so as a result, we have this Team Expo out here today. I'm going to be talking more about that as we, we, we uh, go along here, but uh, it's really our Super Bowl of Super Bowls. So Team Expo here on this. I know the Super Bowl is kind of, which by the way, I, I had a guy remind me, why is the Super Bowl such a big deal? I mean, we're not... He, he said, basically, it's in Arizona, so we're not going to know the results for another month. <laughs> ah, you're with me. There we go. We're with it. He's like, so, the Super Bowl, man. Super Bowl's a big thing. Get, get in on the team, right? But I'm telling you, it's, it's even greater when you get in on God's team. And we're going to be discussing that today. But, you know, I get it. Some of you are struggling. You're like, I'm hurting so bad. I don't even want to think about this. You know, I had a psychologist... Uh, the, write a book and, and we constantly, and it really works. I worked for a psychologist. I also read Minerth and Meyer who talked about this. If you're struggling, if you're hurting, their best advice is, look, lock the door, throw away the key or put it somewhere where you can't get it. Go across the railroad tracks and find somebody in need and begin helping somebody else. And you'll be amazed at how strong and healthy you start to feel again. Friends, that's the power of God at work in you. That's what they're talking about. There is only one life that he's given us on that cross. And that's the example. That's the paradox of dying to live, of giving up to, to have more energy and have more life in him and the purpose that he has for us, the abundant life that he has for us. And so we're going to look at the book of Philemon today, and we're going to actually just kind of really cover the whole thing. So you can walk away from here with bragging rights, guys. I read a book in the Bible, right? So there's one chapter, the book of Philemon. I don't know how many of you know very much about it, but Philemon is this businessman who has to discover a life beyond the black and white. He's got to find this life beyond the bottom line, the profits and loss sheets. And Paul is going to instruct him, he's going to help him to try and help him understand that life is in giving and forgiving. That's grace. That's God's favor that he has for us. He poured out on the cross a free gift for us, but he doesn't want us to just hoard it and keep it for ourselves. That results in the Dead Sea. 
The Dead Sea just receives it all, and it becomes this deadly thing to every fish and every animal, right? We don't just receive. you got to pour it out again to be a living organism. And Philemon's this businessman that's starting to become closed off instead of continuing that. Paul's concerned about that. And then he talks about this man, Onesimus. He's actually the subject of Philemon, the low man on the totem pole. Uh, Philemon basically shows us that all of us are important. All of us are connected. Everyone is a fellow soldier, a fellow servant for God. Everybody is needed on the team with Team Jesus. I mean, Jesus, he, he met us where we were most needed, and he lifted us up and brought us to his team. I mean, basically, Onesimus is like this water boy that God lifts up. By the end of the story, you're going to see how God lifts him up in this amazing way. And through, through his grace and, and through Paul and even through Philemon, a pretty incredible, incredible story. I mean, how will you feel when you got a star player on your team? If you had a Michael Jordan uh, and you were going to go out and play basketball, you know, how would you feel? You'd feel pretty confident, wouldn't you? You're going to win, right? How would you feel if, if you know, suddenly you're, you're going to play golf and Tiger Woods is there and he gets teamed up with you and it's a golf scramble? You'd be free. You'd be like, man, we're, we're going to ace this thing. Yeah? Maybe some of you ladies need to think about, you know, Casey DeSantis, man. She's doing all these crazy things for family out there. I'll tell you, you'd be on her team. You feel like you can win in all this onslaught against our families. It's amazing when we're on Team Jesus, well, we should feel like we're the champions of the world because we are. That's what John says in John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Who is that Word, that Logos from the beginning, that logic of the universe? It's Jesus. When we put our hearts all into him, he's promised us that a flood of living water, the Holy Spirit would flood within our soul. Let's talk about these spiritual gifts that he's given so that we could flourish in faith for him. I got some observations for us today and thinking about this flourishing life, a life where we're like trees planted by spring, springs of water, right? Psalm chapter one says that tree that's planted close to the stream of living water of Jesus it has no worry of drought, of famine. It produces its fruit in season and out of season. Friends, that's the life of the Christian. And that's the life here that Paul is trying to convey to Philemon and to Nesimus. Observation one, flourishing is deep fellowship with God. This is what he's talking about, fellowship. What is fellowship? Well, every week we talk Acts chapter 2, we're fulfilling Acts chapter 2 by meeting together and by having four practices we'll always have. That's prayer, fellowship, the breaking of bread, and the apostles' doctrine. The apostles' doctrine is me preaching or somebody else preaching. We always have to have the word, the, the apostles, and they're expounding on Jesus. We also have the breaking of bread, which is communion. That's every week, because that's what they did from the early church, Acts chapter 2, all this grace that they understood. And then they have prayer, and then they had fellowship. What is fellowship? Friends, fellowship is a lot more than just drinking coffee and saying, how was your week? You're like, okay, i got to go a level, level deeper than that. No, you got to go four levels deeper than that. You know, like communication has a surface level, and there's five levels. You can Google that. You look it up. Five levels of communication, you get to the deepest level. That's true fellowship. True fellowship, the word koinonia means a sharing together. And you read in Acts chapter 2, and you see that they had all things in common. They were listening intently to each other's needs. They were providing for each other's needs. They were fellowshipping together. They were koinoniaing together together. They were sharing deeply together. And that flourishing happens when we come together in Jesus' name. And Philemon had a certain taste of that. We're going to see that here, verse 3 through 7. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. I always thank my God when I pray for you, Philemon, because I keep hearing about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people. And I'm praying that you will put into action the generosity that comes from your faith as you understand and experience all the good things we have in Christ. Your love has given me much joy and comfort, my brother, for your kindness has been refreshed it has refreshed the hearts of God's people. Now, he's really complimenting him before he kind of confronts him. That's kind of the way I would kind of do it, too. You know, it's just it's a sandwich. You start out complimenting, and then you kind of bring the, you know, 
Not the casual conversation. You bring the kind of little confrontational, and then you bring back the compliment again so that they understand you're not out against them. You're really for them. So he compliments them. He says, look, you got great faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, Philemon had gone all in. He'd been baptized into Christ, and, and he'd had fruits in keeping with repentance. That's really good, but that's just a start. And he says, you have love for all God's people. He gets this idea of koinonia. Uh, and, and this idea of koinonia means that you go beyond the, the worship service to, to showing it to people outside the worship service. And then he says, you pray, he prays for his generosity. They would keep putting it into action, showing understanding of all that we have in Jesus Christ. When you give to others, when you put your generosity in action, it shows that you understand how much God did for you in Jesus Christ. It proves to others you get it. You get it. And then you're refreshing the hearts of God's people. Man, this this reminds me of Hebrews chapter 11. It gives all these saints a glory, right? You got Noah, Abraham, Moses. He goes through all these people that poured it out for God. And some of them were sawed in two at the end and they never saw their rewards. And then in chapter 12 of Hebrews verse 1, it says this. Because of this great cloud of witnesses. It's, it's like he's talking about these saints as well as the angels. It's like they're on tippy toes looking down. He says, throw off everything that tangles and keep running the race to win, to win, to win. Run the race. Throw off the sin. Throw off the things of this world that's trying to pull you down. And go after the honey and the rock. Go after this refreshing that he's talking about here. Good start, Phil. Good start. Come on. There's a lot more to go. And by the way, I'm going to talk to you about Onesimus here in just a second. All right? You need to include him on the team. You need to welcome him back. He's, he was part of your family. He disappointed you. He hurt you. Okay. But you need to forgive him. You need to welcome him back. Get him back. He's now on the winning team with us. He's given his life to Jesus Christ. Woo! That's a big deal. And that's kind of what we're asking you today is, is to understand we want you on our team. We need you here on our team. We need you. And these tables around here i could just picture a flood of people just going i gotta have these sheets you're talking about that's gonna inform me about ministry because i know i'm gonna be so blessed i'm gonna be more blessed by getting one of those sheets than if i had a ticket to the super bowl today i got a few chuckles i'm not kidding I'm not kidding. If I had $10 tickets to the Super Bowl, some of you would grab it up going, I'm finding a way to get to Arizona in time to see that Super Bowl today. So, I mean, that's what just really gets me some days, right? I mean, really, for, for church, we need to be doing the kinds of things they're doing for, for football. You know what I'm talking about? Man, I would love it to see some of you guys like two hours before service out there tailgate. Hey, come on, man. Join with us at Corn Ball. It's going to be a great day today. We're going to meet with God. It's going to be awesome, you know, and just kind of bannering about what God said to you this day and this day and, you know, and what God did in your life. And you're just like, yeah, this is going to be awesome. We're going to meet with God today and he's going to power us up. That's what we want to see. Yeah, it just it blows me away, right? I'm telling you, so, so our son playing football, and we're at Virginia Tech, and it is sleeting, and it is just, and I'm looking around, and I'm like, it's not bothering any of these other fans. It's bothering my wife and I. My wife went into the restroom at halftime, and she, I didn't think she was going to come out. I was sending people in there to find a rescue. She says, I had to get up all my courage and all my prayer life. God, please don't let me disappoint my son, but I am freezing. I can't go back out there, you know. But, man, there's these people, don't blink an eye at that kind of weather, and sitting in it for four hours. And yet we blink an eye about this subject I'm talking about today, getting fully involved in God's team. Being all in. Man, that's the the church has to come alive. 
Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world today. But friends, what we're talking about in this Team Expo is joining up with us, partnering, linking arms. Man, how do you become comrades in a real army? You're in the trenches with the people. How do you become comrades in God's army? Join us in the trenches. And all it is is we're just asking for like two or three more hours. Listen, I get it. Many of you are on the front lines. You're out there in your business. You're looking how you can spread the joy of Jesus. And you put in 60 hours of work a week. We're just asking for two or three or four more hours. But that's how you really get to know people. And that's how you experience friendship and life with people. And we talk to the staff, and they're like, yeah, we, we see a lot of people that want that, but they, we keep telling them serve. We keep telling them kind of be here around other people, and you'll experience that. And they want it, but they won't do it. Man, you you got to, which, by the way, since I'm already speaking about football, I'm way off track. I have no idea where I am in my notes. But let me just, <laughs> let me just say, you know what the irony of football is, right? I mean, you got 60,000 people in the fans who desperately need exercise and 24 people on the field that desperately need rest. <laughs> and that's all I'm asking is let's get out of the stands and let's play this game together. It's better than a game. It's so much be it's, it's better than a Super Bowl. Eternity is in the balance where we can be refreshing others' hearts refreshing hearts, helping people have heart transplants. You think it's pretty exciting when a doctor gives a successful heart transplant? We can become part of that surgery room. Observation number two. Whew, I need to go on. Flourishing is recognizing our usefulness to God. Paul says over and over again here to finally, I'm a prisoner, I'm a prisoner. Why does he do this? In other letters, he says, you know, by the authority, I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ. You need to listen to me. Why does he go, I'm a prisoner here? Because he's reminding Philemon, oh, you're this successful businessman, and I'm in prison for Christ. By the way, remember, I brought you to Christ. By the way, Philemon, what have you done for Christ? Here I am in this dungeon. I mean, prisons were horrible. They weren't like the prisons today. I mean, this, people could see through the bars at times and spit on people, excrement, constantly thrown into prison cells. They hated those people. Paul's in prison, but while he's in prison, somehow Onesimus has come to him who owes Philemon a great debt, and, and he's like, he tells him about Jesus, and Onesimus realizes he needs to go back to Philemon to make it all right, but Philemon's likely not going to receive him because he knows Philemon's still kind of immature in his faith and so Paul needs to write this letter and Paul saying look this Onesimus who was useless to you because you got so upset at him and you kind of drove him away remember what his name means he's given a play on words here Onesimus means useful <laughs> and so he says he's useful now to me to Christ and his kingdom on his team. And by the way, who was useless to you? He's now useful to me. Look at verse 10. I appeal to you to show kindness to my child, Onesimus. I became his father in the faith while we were here in prison. Onesimus hasn't been of much use to you in the past. You see that word in the Greek is the same word. He, he Useful, but he's not been useful. But now he's useful to both of us. I'm sending him back to you. And with you comes my own heart. <laughs> This play on words on Onesimus is just awesome. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the play on the metaphor of the background, the historical background that was going on for the church of Laodicea. Remember the church of Laodicea in Revelation? God, Jesus says, look, you need to be either hot or cold, but not lukewarm, or I'm going to spew you. I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. A lot of people don't realize what that means. They don't understand what that means. There was these aqueducts that fed into Laodicea. And they would have immediately understood the metaphor. The water that came through that was putrid. It had been warm and it probably collected parasites on the way. And so when they got it, they couldn't drink it, even though they were very thirsty. They would either have to heat it up a lot or freeze it to kill those, those antibodies, those different things, and create something healthy for them. But it wasn't useful to them when it came. They had to do all these steps. And God was saying to Laodicea, and he's saying to us today through Onesimus, B 
be useful to God. In fact, guess what? All of you are useful. Every single one of you. We are not who we could be if you're not being used in this fellowship and linking arms with you, us. We need you. God wants us useful. Sam and Tracy Matthias were two professors over at UNF. They heard this message years ago, 12, 13 years ago, and they got very involved in here. There were two UNF speech professors, very involved with their classes. You know professors, they're up late at night grading papers and all this stuff, but man, they were pouring it out five and ten hours a week here in the church, and God took them on even greater adventures, adventures than these, and so a couple years ago, they came to me. I'll never forget it in my office. They said, we want to start this Chosen Reigns Ranch where we're basically mentoring kids, counseling kids in the Bible and turning their lives around. We've seen it happen. We believe God is calling us to it, and we invested in them. And as a result, over the last couple years, they, over 365, as, as a couple months ago, over 365 kids have been mentored and changed for the gospel. And our mission supports that, friends. That's what we're talking about, a useful life. God can use anybody who makes himself available. Observation number three, flourishing is discovering eternal friendships and purpose and meaning. You know, Stephen reminded me, he went to his conference and they said, you need to stop telling your church it's a generous church. Well, what? We have a very generous church. It almost seemed almost got defensive. You know, you got a great executive minister there. He was fighting words, right? He says, you got generous people in your church. It doesn't mean you're a generous church. What he's talking about is the 2080 Pareto principle, right? 20% are usually very, very generous, and everybody else tends to kind of hang on. Friends, that's not biblical. That's not Acts chapter 2. That's not anything of what I've been talking about. The church is about everybody being all in, everybody 100% being generous. And that's what this Team Expo is about, moving us. In that direction. Paul says in verse 1, Philemon and his family are dear, are dear friends. Aphia and his sister is a sister in the faith. And Archippus, that's where we get the word Archie, I guess. Archippus, right? He's, he's like a son or a leader in the church. He's a fellow soldier. Paul had people on his team from all walks of life and it developed deep, deep friendships. It was purpose it was meaning I mean you talk to these women who are pouring it out on Sunday afternoons now to over 80 elementary girls they're pouring it out to that next generation laying the framework and we are praying for men who will do that kind of thing from all walks of life to join with us in this team if you will only if you will put it all in for Jesus Paul's friend, John Mark, quoted Jesus who said, you give and, and you'll receive a hundredfold. Brothers, sisters, mothers, I, I can tell you that's true. I've had a lot of mothers in the faith, a lot of brothers in the faith. You, you put it all in. It's amazing the mentors that God brings. And Onesimus did that. And Philemon, we believe, received Paul's word to him. Ignatius was a church leader writing 50 years after this letter and he addresses a church leader. He calls him a wonderful church leader, and his name was Onesimus. And most people believe it's the same guy he's talking about here. The Onesimus that formerly was useless is now incredibly useful. You see, Christianity frees us up, friends, to be everything God created us to be. Don't you see it? Don't you see it? Here's the fourth observation. Everyone in this story is learning to live in the overflow. Nobody's arrived. Paul is admitting in this thing, look, I haven't arrived yet. And he's coming as a humble servant to him. It's like the Lord whispered in my ear this past week, this scripture. I'm like, what, is this? what are you trying to tell me, Lord? It says, Matthew 10, 41, receive a prophet and you'll receive a prophet's reward. You remember that scripture Jesus said? And then he goes on to say in verse 42, and if you give even a cup of cold water to the, one of the least of these followers of mine, you will surely be rewarded. And all of a sudden, it dawned on me. Phil, Philemon, and Onesimus, not only are they going to get rewards for the church that was at his house, and then Onesimus for coming out of that, that slavery mindset and becoming a leader in the church, 
Not only will they get rewards in heaven for what they're doing, but guess what? They can collect a prophet's reward too because they continued the grace of Paul. Paul's rewards become their rewards too. This is how it works in the teamwork of Christ. And so we want you to pray. We want you to join our team. This is Valentine's Day coming up, and I love the Valentine's law that says you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving, right? That's the way it ought to be. And so there's going to be hearts given. There's going to be words given. There's going to be chocolates and flowers and dinners. And that's the way it should be because if you really love somebody, you can't help but give. If you really love Christ, you can't help but give either. Jesus said in Acts 20, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Inherently, we know this. It's time for us to start flourishing and have the faith to put it into practice. And on page 175 of Soul Strength, Dr. Alan Algram quotes some other Teresa. He said, who is fond of saying, we cannot all do great things, but we can do small things with great, great love. Man, don't be like the, the one talent guy. Who said, oh, I just got the one talent. I got my small little thing. I can't do much with this. And he buried it in the sand. And later the master came back and said, you wicked and lazy servant. I give you stuff so that you'll expand it. I give you talents and spiritual gifts and abilities so you'll expand it. Now, we need to be like the two talent, the five talent person. So it doesn't matter how many you give to me. I'm going to expand it to more. Because it's all yours, God. And it's all for your kingdom. Let's pray. Father, we come thanking you today for the richness of our life in Jesus Christ. That you didn't just give us salvation on a cross, but you gave us your Holy Spirit. You said you poured it out for us so that we would let it overflow to others. We pray that this will be the story of Creekside as a whole church in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We hope the message you just listened to had an impact on you. Make sure to stay connected with us throughout the week online at CreeksideChristian.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Creekside Christian Church. We believe God has something unique to say to you, and our hope is that you feel His love stronger today than ever before. We love you, and we'll see you next time.